Hello, hello everyone. Hopefully, everything is working. I'm using some new equipment, I'm testing a whole bunch of things. Hopefully everything doesn't go wrong. I don't even know if the audio is synced. Basically, it is a Friday. Everything is going to break. It's gonna be great. Okay? So, we are back with, uh, 1056. Another one that I am very excited to read. And I think that we do not have a chapter next week. I believe that is the case. So, next week, I don't know. Will there be a stream? Will there not be? It's fine. Audio is fine and synced so far. Great, great. That is, that is very good to hear. I'm basically using my phone right now as a camera. I don't know if like any of it works. It's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, a fun one if everything goes wrong. All right, 1056. So as usual, what am I expecting? What am I expecting? Um, are we gonna leave Wano? I think we will. I think it's time for us to finally leave Wano. Uh, we're probably gonna see Yamato join up. And then... That's probably gonna be it. It's probably just gonna be a pretty low-key chapter. Maybe we're gonna get a few bombshells here and there, because you know we're sort of already beginning to set up what comes next. But, um... I'm not expecting anything, like, super big. Alright. Without further ado. Chapter 1056. Cross Guild. Whatever that means. The flower capital after the festivities. Uh, alright, so they were wrapped up in the... Okay, so they're still mummies. But they, they're fine, right? It's not gonna be like... It's not gonna be a big deal. We may find it hard to admit, but that man had a point. Kaido's presence did keep others at bay. Yes, we do, do, we do know that. He did have a reputation after all. Alright, so yeah, this is a follow-up with, with the town that burned down. I still don't- you have no clue how much I struggled writing the Wano script. Because there were like so many places and so many people. I just resorted to giving them nicknames, as I usually do. I don't remember names at all. Like literally. At all. Okay, so at least- at least Kinemon is seeming to have a- a reunion of sorts and living happily ever after, I suppose. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Even after 20 years, Tsuru is as gorgeous as ever. Great. Enough already, uh, even Puppy Love isn't this sappy. Very. I mean, th th that sounds like a Brook line, not a... I don't know their names. I, I called him Dog King Boy for the entirety of the series, by the way. Spoilers, I suppose. Alright. We have Carrot. Uh, you summon me, what's up? Yugara will be the new ruler of Mokomo Kingdom. I mean, I, I told you, I told you. Everybody who thought Coward was going to be a straw hat, I don't know what you guys were thinking. I know that this was a fairly common belief. Not for a second did I think that she would be a straw hat. Okay, actually, I'm lying. I did, I did think about that for like a little bit, like at the end of Zo and moving into Whole Cake Island. So... Carrot is apparently going to be ruler. Uh, the cat and I have decided to stay in Wano. To serve as retainers and protect Momonosuke. You've grown very dependable after the adventures with Straw Hats. You've definitely got what it takes to be the lead. Okay. This makes sense. I mean, all of us knew that she wasn't going to be a Straw Hat. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Yamato is the next Straw Hat and... That's basically the end of that. Though, I'm kind of curious about Zoe in general, right? Because, I think, again, this is spoilers for the video, but I absolutely loved Zoe. Like, I loved everything about it. Everything. So, I really wish we would return to Zoe, but we don't really have a reason to do that. Which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, assuming... What was the elephant named? Whatever. That's obviously going to be important, so maybe that's how we're going to see it again, but... I don't know. I loved Zo. I want to see more of it. This is good. This is a win in my book. But some of the others are way stronger than me. So, basically, everybody is just going to support her. That's great. Uh, but Zo can return to us. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, because it's moving, we're probably going to see it that way, but... 
Like returning to it, we don't really have a reason to do that anymore. Yeah, we leave Zoe to you youngsters. Great. Is this, is this like a 100% confirmation that Pedro is finally dead? Okay. I don't know if I'm the only one. But ever since he blew up, right? I've been expecting him to return. I'm not gonna lie. Ever since Whole Cake Island, I fully expected for it to be a fake-out death. So, I assume literally everybody's saying now that his will is living within her, this is finally a confirmation that I'm happy with. Great. Great. Everyone has had the worry that Pedro is going to come back. I mean, his narrative arc ended so perfectly. Like, if he were to come back, you wouldn't hear the end of it. Like, ever. Ever. I would literally rant about it for the rest of One Piece. The ex-Shogun has just dropped the act and has revealed the fact that he was indeed... Okay, yeah. I'm in your debt, you are truly the spitting image of your father, Momo. Is he? This... Am I the only one that doesn't see the resemblance? I don't think Momo really looks like Odin that much. <laughs> he is if you put a plate on his head. Kind of similar face structure? I don't, I don't see it. Maybe it's because... Have I even seen Odin in the manga? I don't... Oh no, yeah, I did. I did. But very, very briefly. Because I've only seen Odin in the anime. But he was, he was after the... Yeah, 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 I've seen him like once or twice. I don't see the resemblance though. Anyway. Um, okay, yeah. Everybody except Kinemon. <laughs> Of course, of course. Everybody except Kinemon knew that he was him. Uh, I don't blame Oda for not wanting to make him exactly like Odin too, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, this is this is something that I feel like I don't know. Is this a hot take or not? This is something I'm not particularly liking with uh, with Sabo in retrospect, because. He has replaced Ace in so, so many ways. And I don't mean, like, replaced in terms of just stepping into his position or something, like. right? He is he has literally become Ace. I mean, even down to his fruit power. Okay, Ace was a pirate, Sabo was a revolutionary. But they are alike in so, so many ways. It's like... Ace died, right? But, I mean, here's Sabo. He is basically Ace 2.0. I don't know if this is a hot take or not. But it really feels like that. It really feels like that for me. At first, I like really, really liked seeing Sabo back into the picture. But with everything that has gone down recently and like upon reflection, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the fact that they are both Luffy's big brother characters what makes it feel like that at most. I'm still hoping Sabo will do more in the story that makes him different from Ace. I hope so too. I really like Sabo and I really like Ace, right? That's not a bad thing. I just feel like the fact that he, I mean, he blatantly replaced him. Again, even down to the fruit power. It was like, I get that it's quite kind of poetic, right? Because uh, he inherits Ace's spirit and all that. But, I don't know, it feels like Oda killed off Ace and was just like, Oh no, why did I kill him off? Well, it's fine, I'll just bring in another one, right? And then we just got literally the same exact person just with slightly different allegiances, with the same power, and, I mean, again, he's the big brother of Luffy. Uh, didn't you torch the blueprints for that thing, Frankie? Yeah, Pluton, it's an ancient weapon named after a god. You want it, Luffy? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> of course. Of course. Thought you'd say that, still I can't help but wonder why would Odin want to unleash it? Though, yeah, this this is a very good question, right? Because Odin wanted to unleash Pluton. Why would he want to do that, though? I mean, I I'm assuming much of that is fueled by what they saw in Laugh Tale, right? Very, very interesting. Especially now that I'm working... I'm basically now beginning to edit the Zo video. Um, and I'm just going through everything I recorded there. And obviously there we get a lot of this lore. Uh, unleash but held by the right people, I Joy Boy. If Odin were to unleash it... Joy Boy didn't exist yet, right? It was merely... It was still prophesized to arrive. Because they said, like, what? Joy Boy would arrive in, I think they said, 20 years? 
right? That's why they sent him into the future 20 years. So if he were to come back and unleash it, unleashing a ancient weapon for 20 years, I don't know if that's a good idea. But Luffy just being like, nah, I'm good, that, that's, that's excellent. That is top tier Luffy moment. Okay, so... The ninja lady now looks different. Great. Uh, I'm gonna be Shinobu's apprentice. Think I could get strong enough to join your crew next time we meet. Next crewmate confirmed, right? We're gonna return to Wano. Okay, 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 listen to this, listen to this. So, we're gonna go on a mini trip, right? We're gonna find out the truths of the world, right? Then we're gonna return to Wano, because we need Pluton, obviously. Uh, we're, ge uh, we're going to get Pluton. And then, uh, Otama is going to join the crew. Yeah, simple as that. Prediction right now. Let's move on. Oh god, it's this guy again. Pluton's in Wano, first Poseidon, now this. There's a certain someone who'd love to hear about this. What are you up to, little snake man? So, is Oda just making a character that's going to accidentally overhear, like... All the, all the locations of the ancient weapons? That'd be pretty handy. Who is he talking about, though? Blackbeard? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's Blackbeard. You think it's Buggy? Uh, I've been assuming that Caribou has been an agent of Blackbeard for a while. Yeah, I think I think it's Blackbeard. I mean, to be fair, I think everything is Blackbeard, so <laughs> that's probably not surprising. Like, whenever something mysterious happens, I'm just like, it's Blackbeard. It's Blackbeard. Don't worry about it. Blackbeard's making moves. It's gotta be him. Um, I mean, it's the easiest way uh, to get Blackbeard into the plot to try to steal the ancient weapons. I think the easiest way of getting Blackbird into the plot is if he has the, um, the last, uh, the last Bonoglyph, uh, the fourth one. I think that's the easiest way of getting him into the plot, which I still think is gonna happen. The only thing that I'm thinking right now, like, if he has, I think it's either or. It's either going to be he's after the ancient weapons, or he is going to have the fourth Bonoglyph. I think it's either or. And, um, I don't know. It kind of depends on what order I think Oda wants to go, in terms of the story. Okay, but what's going on with Momo? Why does he look so... What's going on with Momo? He looks kind of sad. What's going on, Momo? Okay, never mind. Hey, Zoro, can you teach me some sword moves? Okay, so every... <laughs> everyone just left. Is this, is this like a typo, or did he really use... He used the honorific for Nami only. Because he says, oh, Nami. I don't know if that's a typo or not, but if it's not, then that's funny. Because he used, <laughs> he used the honorific form literally only for her. The rest are just Usopp Sanji. So everybody is left. And Yamato's gone too. So they just left. They literally just left. Uh, Momonosuke, Kinemon, Luffy, and the rest of I just found out myself. They said their goodbyes to Denjiro and the others. Why leave us out? Because they don't want to say goodbye. It, it's, it's just simple as that. Uh, yeah, that's the sort of thing that happens with translating and the losses that happen in the process. Yeah, that that is just unfortunate. Uh, like losing the smaller details. This is, again, one of the things that people always get angry about, right? When I talk about uh, localizations, so specifically, it, it's, it's like a really big deal with uh, dubbing series, right? When you dub an anime, they usually change jokes so that they work with our culture, right? So they take like a joke that only works in Japanese. Puns are like the best example of this, right? Like Japanese puns just don't work in English, right? Because puns are basically wordplay in most cases. Um, and they change it. And people get angry about it. But like, why would you get angry about it? The point is that it's a joke. Obviously they're going to change it. Oh, this is a big panel. Alright, what do we have? Uh, okay, I, <laughs> of course they're arguing again. Uh, just pick a different day to leave. Our alliance has run its course for rivals now. No way, we've already decided to set sail today. 
let's at least pick different routes. We're all leaving now. Okay. Uh, north east is the most direct route. Did you two just randomly pick the ones childish? <laughs> of course, of course. This is this is just classic shenanigans. <laughs> I lost the draw. Sorry, guys. I'm the emperor. I should be the best at drawing lots. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Buggy, the bombastic clown, surprising nobody, he has teamed up with Mihawk. But Crocodile as well. Hmm. Well, isn't that interesting? So what are we thinking here? What are we thinking here? So this is where the title comes from, Cross Guild. What are we thinking here? What's going on here? I get, I get Mihawk, right? But what's up with Crocodile? Uh, they're both using Buggy's reputation to their advantage. Maybe? I can see that with... I don't know. Because why... I always thought that Mihawk would join up with Buggy. That's just an assumption I've had. But Crocodile suddenly coming back into the picture, because he was doing like his sort of shady deals with Mr. One, right? After a marine ford. So it could be that they're leveraging his reputation. And why does Buggy actually look somewhat frightening now? He's obviously not. Buggy has connections all over the world due to his delivery service. Uh, I think they just came together as partners, but the world government thought that Buggy was their uh, leader. So basically you just think that this is another case of him accidentally failing upwards, right? So that's that's your assumption. I mean, that works, that tracks, that has happened many times already. So it could easily be that. Buggy's always been fighting in black and white. That's also a case, yeah, because I haven't seen Buggy in the manga basically at all. He actually looks like a pirate now. Spooky, spooky, very spooky. It could be that basically he just locked out and got tied up with them. It could be that. Crocodile and Hawk, are they working under Buggy now? Yeah, and Zoro's even saying I can't imagine Hawkeye doing that. Oh, uh, if he's capable of commanding men like this. <laughs> of course he is, right? He's going to command Mihawk, right, right. Alright, then he's definitely worthy uh, of an emperor tile. Trust me, he's just a moron. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Buggy is the champion of failing upward. Yes, and I just hope that the... I, I mean, I kind of like the joke. I kind of like the joke to a certain extent. But I think it's getting out of hand now. And I feel like... People have said that Oda is... Uh, Buggy is Oda's favorite character, right? And um, I just hope that he doesn't lean into the gag to the point that he, like, actually ends up in Laugh Tale. Accidentally. Because th that would just be... It would just be so, so dumb. I don't want that to happen. I really, really don't. I want him to actually be, like... You know. Buggy for... No. No. No, no buggy for Pirate King. Yeah, because Buggy is... I basically have the same problem with Buggy that I have with a lot of other characters. Like, they have a solid gag, but it just becomes too much, right? It just gets repeated time after time after time. Buggy is Joy Boy? No, he's not. No, he's not. If he was Joy Boy, then he'd be sparking joy. He's not sparking joy. This does not spark joy, basically. Um, whatever it was, it seems this cross guild of his is issuing bounties on marines. Well, that's an interesting development. Now those navy dogs have to watch their backs too. The hunters have become the hunted. Sounds like the world really changed while we were in this isolated country. Everyone's done whining about their routes, right? Once we leave Wano, it's every man for himself. I don't want to hear any excuses. This is... This is actually big. Yeah, and like, now that he has... 
it could just be literally him leveraging his reputation. This is, like, the perfect example of him leveraging his reputation. Because if, like, low-level marines think that they're basically being hunted by an emperor, obviously they're gonna think twice about what they do. Okay, buggy. Okay, buggy. I admit, probably wasn't his idea. It was probably Crocodile's idea. But, um... Okay. Okay. Uh, what the hell is this Trafalgar? It's a copy of the Road Poneglyph. You earned it too. Oh, so Law's being cool. It wouldn't be sporting to keep it from you. So how many... How many things does, uh, this kid have? Uh, I can already see the scene. Buggy throwing a tantrum. Oh, they, they put a bounty on my head. I will do the same. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> he has two. So, does he have the, the Kaido one and the Big Mom one? Uh, see, see, friends, this is why you read. It literally says it's like the one we forced the big... I'm gonna stop asking questions before I read things, okay? <laughs> they say that in the next panel. <laughs> I know. Uh, if you want to stay ahead in the scramble for the One Piece, we ought to get serious about that guy. You want to go after the man marked by flames, but we've got no leads. Marked by flames, what are you talking about? You don't know, I guess we're a step ahead of you. A man marked by flames? Is that Sabo? A man marked by flames. But isn't Aokiji technically a part of Blackbeard's crew at the moment? Uh, Sabo is the obvious yes, but it can't be him. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because, like, Sabo is the one that pops into my mind first. And I'm guessing it wouldn't be that easy. By the way, a bit of a, a, bit of a uh, behind-the-scenes look into how I work. I have literally... Let me tell you how many images I have. I have 15,000 stills of One Piece. Okay? So, trust me when I say I do my homework. Uh, seems like Law and Robin know something about it, by the way they reacted. Definitely Law. Law definitely has... What? Another wild theory, right? They know about Rayleigh. Kid isn't exactly a good dude. Okay. So... Why isn't Kid going after Rayleigh? I mean, he he knows he's probably gonna lose. But, I mean, Rayleigh's been at Laugh Tale. Think about that. Think about that. Because Luffy is the only one, maybe Law too. But, like, Luffy could have learned about Laugh Tale back in Sabote, right? It's just him being a cool dude and not wanting to do that. Does Kid also live by that philosophy? Because if he doesn't, then... We've got a person who knows everything about it, right? Though Rayleigh's scar isn't isn't a burn either. It's a, it's clearly a sword. Um I definitely think it's someone related to Roger. It could be. It could be. I mean, we're still actually, you know how I just said we're going to set up a major villain? Um we don't really know a lot about the Rocks pirates yet, do we?